So good morning committee for the record, Bryn Hare from Legislative Council. You do have a new draft of S7, um, which I'm happy to put on my screen if that's helpful for people. Is that 1.2? Yep. Nope, it's draft 2.1. Can oh. you send it to me also, um, Bryn, and I'll sure. post it? Sure, I thought I did, sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> Okay, so Peggy, you should have that in a moment. And um, usually it's helpful for this committee if I share my screen, is that right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, can you see drop 2.1 S7? Yep. Can you blow it up a little bit? Sure. Oh, perfect. That? That's good. That's good. Okay. All right. I'm just going to try and move it. Um, can you still see it? Yes. Yep. yep. Okay, great. I've got so many screens here. Um, oh, okay, that's so, perfect. Okay, great. So there's just a, a few changes to this version from um, draft, I think, 1.2, which you looked at uh, before town meeting week. So I'm going to jump to those changes. And the first one is on page nine, I believe. And I'll just remind the committee, these were just the last few points that you were discussing um, with respect to this bill last week. So the change here, um, this is that provision that you looked at before that um, says that only the office that prosecuted the case uh, can stipulate to a petition to seal or expunge that's filed prior to the date that the um, that the offense is eligible pursuant to the statute. And we've I've just added a little additional language here to clarify that it, this only applies if the person um, is, is petitioning to seal or expunge prior to the date that the offense is eligible as provided according to the statute. So I think there was um, some conversation still ongoing about that, about that piece. Yeah, we're, we're not that seeing area. that change uh, Bryn, can you scroll up on your version? We're only on page. We're one. only seeing. Oh, really? Okay, let me yeah. let me try. There we go. Uh, if a person petitions. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. So the language in yellow is new, um, and it again, it just it adds some additional clarifying language that provides that if it's this this applies only if the person is petitioning prior to the date that the offense is eligible according to the statute. <clears throat> By the okay. way, that uh, Peggy has posted the version on the website if people want to follow up on the website. Okay. Go ahead, Bryn. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next change is on the following page. And this is the new language that deals with um, that, the, the uh, provision that the committee has been spending some time talking about where a person um, is subject to a probation term that is um, dependent uh, on a condition of that probation that requires them to pay restitution. Um, so this language comes from or originated from the Defender General's office and I've just made a, a few changes to um, that, that proposed language. Um, I don't think it's altered the, the spirit of of um, the language at all, but it makes it clear what kind of circumstances we're talking about. So it provides that anyone who's convicted of a qualifying offense uh, for which that person has to serve a probation term, a condition of which is that payment of restitution is entitled to petition the court to seal or expunge that offense once their probation term is completed. And then the second sentence says that the petition has to request that the court in the interest of justice adjust the waiting period for the sealing or expungement um, as it's set out in the expungement statute. And then it directs the court to consider this request. Um, and in considering adjusting the waiting period, the court has to consider the nature and circumstances of the offense, um, typical sentences for similar offenses, and the length of the sentence that was served by the petitioner in deciding whether to adjust the waiting period 
and any adjusted duration um, before the person is eligible for sealing or expungement. Bryn? Yes? Just a quick question about the first sentence. Um, it, it says that they may, um, that they may apply on completion of the probation term. Is that including restitution? Um, so is that, I, my understanding is that that would include restitu restitution if the probation term is depend has a, as a condition of the, of the probation require the defendant to pay restitution. So it doesn't explicitly say that, but I think it's implied by the fact that. Um, yeah, I, I thought that one of the things, and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong on this. I thought one of the things we were discussing was um, that those people who had had restitution as a condition that held them out of the sealing and expungement process for such a long time sometimes, as in the case of Erica Reddick. Um, is, is this in line with what you were hoping for, Joe? Well, some people, and keep in mind, we're dealing with a limited number of individuals now, but some people have been given a probation sentence that has the uh, limitation of until further order of the court. And one of their combined um, or conditions of probation is that they pay restitution. So when it takes an extremely long period of time to pay that restitution, maybe it's $5 a week or whatever the case may be on a $10,000 um, judgment, under that situation, they would still remain on probation until further order of the court. And I'm not sure that this language as written um, would take care of that kind of a situation. Do, did we hear that they're not doing that anymore and so it's that's, mainly that's people it's mainly people who are so maybe we need to put in something there about people who are currently in that situation yeah i i would agree because they they are not doing that anymore so we're talking about a finite group of individuals right how, how do we do that We toss it to ledge council. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can I um, can I can I hear that once more? I was trying to adjust my uh, okay, my so blinds to so I wasn't so so to improve my picture. Go ahead. There are some people out there who have uh, been sentenced in a way that their probation term reads until further order of the court. You're on probation until further order of the court. So there's no finite term for them at that point. One of the conditions of probation that they have is to pay back restitution. If their restitution is an extremely small amount on a very large bill, that could mean they are on probation for many years, uh, well beyond what anybody would normally be on for this particular situation and they're only there because they're on this payment plan that's keeping them held up. But the question is how do you address those people um, and give them an offer of expungement if that open-ended term is still, um, they're laboring under that open-ended term. And I'm, I'm trying to read the language four and five times over as we speak, trying to figure out how to resolve that. So is the idea for the person to be eligible prior to um, satisfying the condition of paying the restitution? Well, that's, uh, I guess, would be my hope. I'm not sure how you get there. And I think Judge uh, Grierson had some concern about that. And I don't know how we reach a middle ground. I Maybe I can't person. remember his concern. Oh, there he is. I, I'm here. Right now, in order for a person to be eligible for a sealing or expungement, they have to have completed their sentence, i.e. they are no longer on probation, um, and they have to have paid restitution or completed their restitution. Because this involves just a very small number of individuals, 
think, and I don't know the exact language, but in concept, I think you could say that um, if they've served a term of probation with payment of restitution as a condition of probation, once the, once the um, restitution has been paid, the person could seek a discharge of, and assuming that's the only condition that's keeping them on probation at that time, uh, once they have uh, paid the restitution, they could seek a discharge. And if that discharge is granted, then the court could uh, consider a request that begins on page 13, uh, line 13. The person could then request that the court in the interest of justice shorten the um, waiting period for, for sealing or expungement. So I think you have to start, you have to start with the discharge being granted. But the but problem is, is that they'll never pay off the restitution. Couldn't so we say, con- oops, sorry, Jeanette. I'm sorry. Couldn't we say as we did with fees, when we didn't want the payment of fees to withhold certain candidates, we just said um, that the payment of fees wouldn't be a factor. Couldn't, couldn't we say here that uh, failure to complete payment of restitution will not in and of itself disqualify a candidate? Yeah. What I, what I don't know, Senator, is on these old cases and maybe Senator Benning uh, may be familiar with it or David Scher, if he's still on. When it was a condition of probation, I'm not sure that they entered into a so-called restitution order in addition to being on probation with an with a condition of paying restitution. So if you discharge them from probation and that's the, that's the only condition that's out there, there's nothing to enforce at that point. Uh, in other words, there's no way to track the uh, restitution. But I, I, if I remember the, the uh, uh, individual who came before the committee, I thought that that was a situation where she had paid the restitution and couldn't get off probation and therefore, because it was till further order of the court and therefore couldn't apply for sealing and expungement. I think it's more common to find that the person has paid the restitution, but they've got this outstanding probation uh, until further order of the court, but I, I could be wrong. I think you're still going to want a discharge from probation and then couple that with a request to shorten the period waiting for sealing or expungement. I think we need to do something about the people who are on a $5 a week payment or $5 a month or whatever it is that just are going to be there forever and ever if they can't. We, do we know if the, those people actually exist? that haven't if, paid the restitution? If, if you're asking me, I don't have a number on that. I don't know how, uh, how many people would be affected by this. Because I thought that was the issue that they couldn't pay off the restitution. Because, and, and I could be we, wrong, but I thought it was the reverse that they had paid restitution but couldn't get off probation. Judge, is it your opinion that anybody who is um, subject to a restitution uh, responsibility is going to avoid that restitution if they are no longer on probation? Because we have this restitution unit. It's now a civil enforcement process. And I'm just I'm trying to wrap my head around what happens if you did give them permission to get an expungement, does that necessarily leave them um, no longer responsible to the restitution unit? The, the, the problem is, is that when you, uh, if you seal or expunge the underlying case, they're effectively, you've taken away the basis for the judgment that was entered. Um, I think you'd need to talk with the restitution unit to really understand the, the implications of that. That that's my understanding that from past testimony that they've provided that it's I, I know from a debt collection standpoint, if you eliminate the judgment, you've eliminated the ability to collect the debt. And so I right. think that's the problem with 
that's why restitution right now under the statute has to be paid before. But but this still requires the payment of the restitution, right? This, this does, but the question is, as I read this language now, and the question that's been raised by the committee is, um, is the person still on probation? And so I'm saying if you couple this ability to request a shortened uh, sealing or expungement record, I think it would certainly address the issues as I understood the individual that appeared before the committee. In other words, discharge him from probation and then allow the court to consider a shortened period for restitution. But this doesn't provide for discharge right now. And so they haven't completed their sentence and therefore they're not eligible. The, the time period for eligibility for um, sealing and expungement hasn't occurred. You've got to eliminate that conviction. They've got to, or, I'm sorry, you've got to, they have to have completed their sentence. Whatever word we're using, completed or executed, you know, yeah. They satisfied. That, that's that. That I think that's. Once they've satisfied the the, the, the restitution. Yeah, I think they're protected once they've satisfied it. The question is whether or not, if they're stuck on this uh, five dollar a week payment plan for twenty years to pay off yeah. whatever this massive bill was. Um, they can never get their record expunged. And th this may be something we can't solve. It may just be something that uh, we have to leave. And I, I'm not sure what else to do about it at this stage. I don't think there's much you can do until, uh, unless you can go back to court and have the conditions changed. And we didn't we do that in a different bill? And the probation bill, don't we allow for, in S45, didn't we allow for yep. somebody to go back to court to change conditions? And that was at the midpoint review. There was the yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. we did. So I, I think they could do that. They could say, you know, <laughs> this five, $5 a month keeping me on probation for the next 20 years. Um, is there a way we can resolve this and whatever? Yeah. There, um, Marshall Paul had the idea of um, to allow a judge to recalculate the term of probation um, and of the sentence after the if the sentence was completed, and then just go with the restitution. Ah, I don't know. Yep, that's that is um this is the language that uh the defender general's office submitted. I've just amended some of the wording a little bit, um, but I'll let Marshall weigh in as to whether he um has any comments on that. No, this is this is substantively the same uh yeah. proposal that we had made, and it was to address um, you know, not a situation of someone who is stuck paying a small amount every week for a long period of time. Yeah. This does not solve that problem. It wasn't intended to. <laughs> this just deals with right. the problem of someone who had pro, uh, restitution as a condition of probation. And because of that, it took them a very long time to complete their probation, um, <laughs> to complete their restitution. And this simply allows the court to, so for example, in Ms. Reddick's case, she was off probation and done paying restitution, but she still had a long time to wait before she could get a, an expungement. And this would allow a court to recalculate that waiting period because she was on probation for sort of an artificially long time. And that's right. all that this language was intended to address. But if Marshall, I, would you agree uh, that they have to be discharged from probation in order to do that calculation first? Yes. I mean, I think the intent of the language that I drafted was that they are off probation because that right. if they have uh, restitution as a uh, term of probation, then the idea was, because I wasn't, in proposing this language, I wasn't trying to change anything substantive about how restitution is currently collected or the criteria for collecting restitution or even the criteria for getting a ceiling or expungement. 
Right. Um, so this wasn't meant to make it so that there was a way to get an expungement while you still owed restitution. Right. It was right. just to deal with that, yeah. with right. the Erica Reddick's problem. Does this, does this satisfy the committee to solve that problem? I think the other problem yeah. solved in S45. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that explanation helped. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Moving right along, Bryn. Yeah. So um, I did hear Judge Grierson say that we may need to change um, just this completion of the probation term to um, satisfy the judgment for the offense, which would be yeah. um, make that language more uh, in line with the rest of the the requirements in the rest of the statute. Does that make sense to yep. everybody? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, so the next change is just something that no longer appears in the bill. Um, and if you remember that you spent some time at the last hearing um, about the issue of the particular breakout waiting periods if a person um, was convicted of a subsequent offense. Yep. Um, on, for certain certain qualifying offenses. Um, and we've just removed all of that waiting period language and gone back to um, the version that was passed last year. Everybody remember that? Yep. I think it's actually on page 17, that language doesn't appear anymore. And that's, that is, those are the, all of the changes that are made in this version. Bryn, yep. that language that were removed, that was May Reed's language that was three years? Right, that was the, proposal from legal aid yes to um make a make different yeah. waiting periods for yeah for certain okay. certain offenses okay yes. great and that is it those are the only three changes from the last draft fantastic i would say yep but uh, there are any further comments from anyone um <clears throat> Who's in the room? Okay, committee, any further comments on this? Now, we, we have to have a new draft number, or can we, can somebody propose? So I can that just, we amend? yeah, oh, sorry. It will have a new draft. Good. It will have okay. a new draft number. Yes, it will be draft 3.1. So I, I'll move that we amend um, S7 with, uh, that we accept the amendments to S7 in draft 3.1. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> um, I do wanna mention we have a, a letter of support um, on our webpage. Um, of four S7 from Anthony Lamora. Well, I probably pronounced the name from the R Street Group um, in Washington, DC. Um, that um, Governor Affairs Associate Association is a strong support of S7. And whoever reports this bill might want to read that article. Um, it um, has a lot of information about the economic impact of uh, expungement. So, uh, Peggy, would you please call the roll? Senator Benning. Yes. Senator Nicka. Yes. Senator White. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. So now I, re I move that we um, report favorably S7 as amended with 3.1. Senator White moves that we report favorably S7 as seen and as amended by draft 3.1. Is there further discussion by anybody in the room? Anybody on the committee? Hearing none, Peggy, would you please call the roll? Senator Benning. Yes. Senator Nika. Yes. Senator White. Yes. 
Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. All right. Who would like to report us? Now? <laughs> Senator Baruth. Senator I'm actually Benning, hoping Senator to White. report another bill. Okay. Well, hopefully you get a positive vote on that bill. Well, that's that's I'm a cockeyed <laughs> optimist. <laughs> uh, Senator Benning normally reports expungement bills. Yeah, that's good choice. Is that a yes, Senator Benning? <laughs> It sounds like I'm entering into default, Peggy. <laughs> no, I, no, seriously, if, if, if somebody, I, I don't, um, I've reported quite a few bills and I am planning to work with Senator White to report S3 if we get a favorable vote. So. Well, Bryn, can you get me a uh, short blurb on the bill? Peggy, can you get me a list of the witnesses? And... Um, Bryn, when you get the uh, new draft in, I have to send that off to John Bloomer for yep. registering purposes. Yep, I just sent it to the committee and I will get you a section by section. Actually, Thank it's you. a lot easier. This is one thing that's un easier on Zoom is, is filing oh. reports, getting them up to the secretary's office. I, I find it to... much more difficult because I don't have that piece of paper and so I forget to... Oh. Send it when oh, I have a piece of okay. paper. I well, you, Peggy sends us the note and reminds us what to do. Which yeah, I know. Even then, I forget. solved the problem for me. Well, <laughs> Senator White. Oh gosh, I hope you don't lose this one or something. <laughs> no, I already sent that one up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, is there any further discussion on any uh, issues? If not, I suggest this has been a really productive meeting. Um, and I, again, I wanted to emphasize that I take responsibility for not having DMH aware of the amendment uh, this morning. The S7.